Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. I'm working with our homemade Geiger counter, which I showed you how to make in a previous show. Uh, in this one, I want to kind of go through some of the things that I've come up with that we could use a Geiger counter for to help us in space exploration. Uh, one of the things I want to start here with is what is a Geiger counter and how does it work? Uh, how it works is by converting. Let's say we have a gamma particle enters into our interior tube in there. That gamma particle will interact with, a, let's say, a borium gas inside of there, a molecule of that borium. Uh, when it interacts as a collision with that borium molecule, that collision creates an ion and an electron out of that uh, particle of radiation. The ion travels to the exterior, the outer tube. The electron, being in the negative charge, goes through on the inner wire, which you'll see in the construction video, and that gives us our positive or negative charge. So what is that doing? It's converting radioactive particles into electric current flow and stopping those particles by converting them. So it's not only a shielding, let's say in space, but also a generator. So what we could do, not this size, not out of these materials, let's say we use nanomaterials, uh, and we built, let's say, a 10 uh, nanometer wide cell. It's basically a little Geiger counter cell, and we hooked a bunch of these 10 nanometer sized Geiger counter cells all together and made a skin out of them, a large enough skin to cover, let's say, the space station with. First of all, what is it going to do for us? We're going to be generating massive current flows, both ion flows and electron flows, out of every interaction from every piece of radiation or every particle of radiation that interacts with the skin of that Geiger counter cell skin. And that will be generating massive power that we could use for ion pulse engines in space for further space travel without massive reserve uh, fuel sources or battery banks on board where the actual radiation that's coming from every corner of the cosmos I mean from pulsars to black holes to our own sun it's coming from everywhere uh, if we can convert that into direct electrical current and then use that electrical con uh, current to convert back to let's say a uh, very very high static electric charge if that charge is used to power an ion pulse engine uh, that's something that we could use all through space give us infinite amounts of energy and basically allow our travel times and our travel distances uh, to, to no longer be regulated by fuel sources or moons that might contain fuel sources uh, so once again, what it would do is, let's say we had a whole skin of these covering the whole surface of, of the space shuttle, and the space shuttle had an ion pulse engine. This was a deep space uh, space shuttle designed for longer journeys than just circling the planet. That microwave gamma radiation, uh, it's not going to do anything about cosmic rays. I don't believe cosmic rays interact with anything that way. Basically, it'll interact with... Uh, all the lowest forms of the EM spectrum, all the high energy forms of the EM spectrum, converting all those into energy we can use. We can store it on board, we can push it into all of our computer equipment, life support equipment on board. I just thought I'd throw it out there for the people to see and get some comments back and see what you guys think about it. I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Teslonian and the Teslonian Man Show.